Hello everybody on YouTube and anybody else who is watching this. My name is Ancelette de Valmont and I'm an actress in LA. Um, I wanted to make this video to sort of get some of my story out there. Um, I went through something today that really upset me and I hate admitting that it upsets me because I feel like it's, I don't want to say it's like stupid, but in a way it is and also I wanted to make this video just to let other people know about my experience with this particular agency that I had today. And, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting over being sick, so my voice is going to be a little... I may have coughing fits. Please forgive me. So, if you have any suggestions, if you guys have any ideas, if you think that I was in the wrong, if they were in the wrong, if we were both in the wrong, if we were both justified, if I was justified, they were justified, whatever, let me know in the comments below and we will go from there. So, my incident that happened today, <clears throat> I got a call back for an agency named the Brogan Agency down in Venice Beach, California, and I was really excited. And so, I went in, I got there a little early, so I did have to wait, but that's fine, and, uh, you know, I got to pet their dogs and stuff. Um, and I was, I was excited, but I was nervous because my voice is going out and so I knew that that was going to be a little bit of a uh, not a problem but I, w I was afraid it was going to affect my confidence so I was already feeling like a little shaky and <clears throat> so they call me up I go up the stairs to where they have their little loft office area it's a very small um, office area and so I'm up there and he wants to hear my monologue which I thought I was there for just doing a commercial so I pulled up my basic monologue that I use for everything. It's a very good one, very dramatic piece. I cry, it's very relatable. Um, everybody tells me it's a very good monologue to use, so <laughs> I chose that one, even though my voice is a little out. And I explained it, I was like, I've, I was on set the other day, I kept having to get in and out of a pool, and it was cold and dark and windy, so I got sick. So they understood, they said it was not a problem, they said, you know, we understand. So I was like, okay, cool, nice. You know, they seem really accommodating to the fact that I sound like I'm both on helium and a pubescent 13 year old boy whose voice is changing. So I did a monologue for them <clears throat> and they had a couple critiques for it which is totally fine with me um, because if somebody can help me grow and switch things around and just make things a little better I'm always open for that. You know he told me a couple of the lines just sounded a little fake, um, sounded like something that somebody wouldn't really say in real life, they sounded a little too scripted. He asked me if I wanted to redo the monologue but I I'm sitting there and I'm like, those lines are actually like kind of a crucial part that help tie everything together and move to transitional. So I said, I, I don't know how to take those lines out without kind of like, I feel like it would just kind of ruin the monologue. So he's like, that's fine. We'll just move on to um, doing a cold read and a commercial. So I was like, okay. So they handed me two slips of paper. One of them had a, uh, you know, a commercial that I read for. Um, he told me I did pretty good on that. And then I did a cold read. He didn't really give me much feedback on that. I'm not sure how it did on that. And then um, he moved on to my headshots. And he asked me if I had any other headshots and I said, well, I do, um, but not with me. And because they were at the printers, unfortunately, so I had, hadn't got a chance to pick them up yet. And he, he basically had two critiques for my headshots, one of which was um, they are low resolution, unfortunately, when they were emailed to me after being edited and such. Somehow um, putting them through the email had compressed them and turned them back into low resolution rather than high resolution. So when I got them and you know download, save and all that, I, I saved low resolution photos. They're still very very good but you can tell they aren't crystal clear. So and then the other one he said was that he didn't like the light, it's kind of a lighter colored background at least on one side. It's like in a hallway scene and I'm leaning up against the hallway. And it's got kind of a light cream background like this, but there was so much um, exposure because of the bounce light that they were using that my hair at the time, it needs a little toner, but it was a very, very light, light blonde at the time. So I can see how it kind of faded into the background to make me stand out so much, which I understood. Now, I was interviewing in front of um, a younger kind of gentleman, maybe mid-20s, um, and there was another lady, she was working on a computer, and she was older, maybe... 40s, 50s, I'm really bad with ages. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I cannot tell people's ages for the life of me. 
so I could be totally wrong about her age or and his age too. And she turns around and she looks at my my headshots and then she goes and says something along <clears throat> sorry says something along the lines of you know you need to do something with like a darker background. And you know I informed her I actually used to have quite a I still have them like somewhere like in the closet. Um, headshots where I do have like a darker gray or black background. Hush up. And I, I just gotta be honest. It looks weird. Like it looks a little too me against because I'm I'm actually really sunburned right now. I don't know if you guys can tell, but normally I am very very pale. My hair is platinum blonde, looks yellow because of the light right now, and I got my roots showing too. But when you have like super pale with super pale, and then you can't tell unless I get close, bright blue eyes against like jet black or like a gray background, I look really, really just weird. Like I just I don't look good. I just look like this like spotlight kind of thing. So it just it doesn't look good for me. So the background, you know. The background of the picture tends to matter a lot when you're doing headshot. So, my pictures have kind of like a, a little more of like a natural background. Like I have one where like I'm sitting on some steps, and you know I really stand out in those. One where like I'm in a hallway. One where I'm sitting down, and you can see like it's faded in the background, of course, but you can tell that it's like some kind of greenery. You can't tell what it is if it's a shrub, a tree, a bush, what it is, but it's in there. And you know it just kind of helps to like break it up. But it just they're really good headshots, and. She told me, she's like, you should do something with blue. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Because from everything I've ever been taught and told by tons of people, professionals, other agents, other managers and such, is you don't really go for a colored background. Because that's, they just say that it just, it just looks weird. They say it just looks awkward. You know, um... And she was very adamant about me getting new headshots taken, which kind of sent up a little bit of a red flag for me because I've had agencies that are like, you need to shoot with our photographer, you need to get new headshots, you need to do this, you need to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. And when they're doing that, personally that makes me feel like, okay, you're just out to get some kind of money out of me. And that's, it happens. There are agencies that will do that, that are out there just to scam people for their money. And so I was like, mm. I'm just like so confused because I've gone to probably $500 worth of manager showcases, agents showcases, intensives, you know, uh, I've paid thousands of dollars for acting in modeling schools and classes and workshops and intensives. Nobody ever has said anything about my headshots before. All of them have said these are very good. Get them in high resolution if you can. Go back to him and see if he still got them on like a hard drive that you can just transfer to your hard drive and get them in high resolution. But everybody's telling me these are perfect. These are what you want. You look, this is how you want to showcase yourself. This is what you want to put out there. This is the first time in nine, almost ten months that I've been, I've been doing this almost a year now, it'll be a year in um, December. Nobody has ever told me that my headshots are bad. Ever. Ever. I've, I've submitted to hundreds of things. And when I was using the dark colored background, I wasn't getting hardly anything. But then I got these ones. It was an immediate 180. Boom. I was getting booked. I was getting auditions. I was getting this role, that role, this project, that project. All over the place. I was getting these things. So... I was just so blindsided and flabbergasted that she was just so adamant about it. And finally, she drops a bomb on me. And instead of, most people would have been like, you know, if you, you know, if you're really interested in us, you know, I would suggest, you know, taking some new photographs just because I really don't feel comfortable putting these out there. Um, I really would prefer something a little closer to our agency style, which is this and that. I do have... A photographer that you guys can use if you have your own you can use it you know but these are some tips um i'd like to see you get a, a headshot with a blue background or whatever if she would have done that that would have been totally fine that would have been totally fine i would have been like 
okay, fine. You know, if if, the, if your agency is like known for having like a look, I guess, okay, that's fine. I have no problem doing that. I have somebody who will take some very good photos of me and he'll find a blue backdrop, even if it's just like against a wall or something. He'll find something and he'll do it for me. It's not a problem. But she didn't say that. Instead, this woman looks me dead in the face and says, I will not accept these. I will not accept these. And I'm just like, um, okay. Like, she was so, like, ferocious about it. Like, she's like, I will not accept these. I'm like, oh, duh. Like, you don't gotta be that rude about it. Like, okay. Like, you could, she could have just said, like, I really don't feel comfortable accepting these, but if you do get some other ones, take maybe, like, you know, take my tips into, you know, consideration, then we'll be happy to possibly think about, you know, putting you out there with representation. She could have done that. That would have been professional, but no. And then I'm just like, um, okay. Like, I'm just, I'm so fucking confused at this point. So she turns back to her computer, and she, like, turns to him, and she's like, she just doesn't want to hear anything I have to say. I'm like, what is this? Like, what is this lady doing? And so I just looked at him, I was like, I've just never had anybody not like my photos before. Like, it, it's just, it was just very shocking to me, you know, out of 10 months. And like I said, $500 worth of submissions and everything and intenses and showcases. Nobody has ever said my headshots are bad other than them being low resolution, which I expected. And so he's just like, he's like, she, does, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's been doing this for 30 years, which I, I respect. You've dedicated probably over half your life to this craft. I understand that you know what you're talking about. But that doesn't give you right to talk to people like that. That's incredibly rude. And so I'm just like, okay. And so I'm just like sitting there awkward. Like, I feel like she's all mad at me now. Because, like, I, I expressed my opinion to her that in my experience, this has been, these photos have gotten me so much work. These photos have gotten me lead roles in feature films. I'm just so flabbergasted that that she doesn't like them. I'm just, it's whatever, everybody has their opinion, everybody has a professional opinion. I'm fine with that. That's okay. And if she would have stopped even there, I, I probably wouldn't have reacted the way I did. But she continues. She's just like muttering, I guess, to him or to the computer, just like under her breath. She's like, I guess she knows a little everything about what does she need us for. She knows everything anyway, so what is she even here for? Da -da 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 -da. She didn't even do anything that well. Da -da -da. I don't even know if I want to represent her anyways now. And it's like, what is this passive, aggressive, high school, childish, bullshit mentality, immaturity that is coming at me from this person who is supposed to be a professional agency? And so... At this point, I'm done. I'm just like, you know what? This is not how a professional agency would react. <coughs> because, sorry, I have passed on other things before where the agent offered me and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I really just don't feel comfortable signing with you. This just isn't the agency for me. I'm really just, I think we, we're going on two different tracks, whatever. And I've turned them down. And how did they react? They're like, okay, thanks. Well, thanks for stopping. Bye. That was it. That was it. That was it. No. I stood up and I handed it back like the, the little papers that had the uh, cold read. <coughs> God, I'm so sorry. <coughs> Bronchitis. Anybody got time for that? <laughs> Maybe I'll have time for a Chipotle root beer. And so I handed back the commercial. And back the uh, the cold read, and I just almost like, this just is not the agency for me. I'm sorry, I I don't want to be represented by you, because, and honestly, I wasn't sitting there cussing. I wasn't like, fuck you, bitch. I don't want your fucking agency. I didn't get like that. I just stood up and said, I'm sorry, you're just not the one for me. And that's fine. Honestly, hey, more room in your company now. You have room for somebody else. That's fine. She got so upset and unprofessional to the point where I am now making this video and I don't do that because this could potentially make me look very bad like I'm complaining about somebody and I'm willing to put my name and my image out there and let you guys know what happened she stands up and she turns on she's like 
Are you kidding me? Like, I personally offended her mother or something. She got so personally offended. And I was just like, you're being really unprofessional right now. I was like, I'm, I'm leaving. Like, and she's like, fine, go ahead since you know everything. Oh yeah, you're 23, you know everything about everything. You're never gonna make it in this world, sweetie. You're never gonna make it in this profession. You aren't shit. And I was like, I was like, actually I'm 21. And she's like, oh, even better, less experience. She's like going on, she's up in the loft. I'm walking down the stairs of this like office slash loft apartment thingy that they have. It's, looks like somebody's house renovated into an apartment fucking office space and she's like yelling at me from up the stairs in the loft as I'm downstairs walking out talking about how I'm a terrible actress how my look isn't gonna get me anywhere my hair looks like shit my look looks like shit blah 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 blah, blah. I just turn around <laughs> And looking back on it, it's probably stupid of me to say it, but it was the only thing that came to mind. Because I already knew immediately, I was like, I'm not going to keep quiet about this. Like, no. So I just turned around, I was like, that's fine. I really don't care. I have, I do have offers from other agencies I'm debating right now, taking. And so I just flat out told her, I was like, that's fine. I was like, keep on. Keep yelling at me. Keep screaming at me. I was like, I will report your unprofessionalism. I will be reporting you. She's like, report me to who, bitch? And I'm just like... I walked, I was outside at that point, she was yelling through the door from up in the loft. She was yelling so loud, physically screaming at me from up in the loft, down the stairs, through the hallway, out the door. I'm already outside and I can still hear her really loud, screaming at the top of her lungs. And I'm just like, I was like, I walk by and then I'm like, I don't know who I'm going to report her to. If they're a SAG agency, I can report her to SAG, but I don't even know if they are or not. So, I started walking back to my car and I started getting really upset because I'm sitting there and I'm like, I came in here so excited, so excited for your company and that's how you represented your company? I was so freaking happy and because I had a difference of opinion you decided that it was okay for you to scream at me and talk to me like that. And then when you made me feel like you didn't even want to represent me, so why am I even there? You're not making me feel welcome, like, hey, we really like you, we really want you. You feel the need to say that I'm ugly, that I'm pathetic, that I'm a shit actress, that I'm never going to make it because I don't want to sign with you because of how you treated me? You're really going to do that? I didn't deserve that. I did not deserve to be screamed at, physically, volume up, screamed at, because I didn't want to join you. Because of how you talk to me. I get that you have over 30 years of experience, and I respect that. I've said that before. I respect that. But I did not deserve to be yelled at. I did not deserve to be condescended to, and I did not deserve to be screamed at through a door by somebody who's supposed to be a professional, who represents children. And that's how you treated me? I have people who referred me to you. And I now get to go to those people and, say, and ask them, please don't ever refer anybody to this lady again because of how she treated me and because how she made an adult feel. You are a grown ass woman. You should not be yelling at a young woman. That is below you, that is beneath you, and that is beyond unprofessional. So yeah, I may look really bad because I'm pretty much shit-talking almost a company, even though it's not shit talk because it's all real. It's all my experience. But that was really fucked up. And I didn't deserve that. So like I said, this may make me look really, really bad. But I'm sorry, I have to get this story out there. If you are ever contacted by Brogan Agency, please watch this video first. Take it with a great assault. They may be a great agency. They may. They may get you work. They may be perfect for everybody else. But for me, and for my experience, and for what I had to go through, this is unacceptable. I have never had somebody 
physically scream at me because I said I didn't want to join you. So I will be sharing this on YouTube, on Facebook, I am all over Instagram, I'm all over Vine, I'm all over Twitter, I am on IMDb, LinkedIn, Yelp, I am everywhere. And I will be taking the time, and you can bet your ass, everybody that I can possibly reach and tell about these experiences that I've had with you will know. I am going to World Class Model Talent Studios. I will personally speak with TJ Stein. I will go to SAG. I will go to anywhere, any lengths that I need to go to. And make sure they never send somebody to you again. What you did was unacceptable. And even if you sent me an apology, I don't think I would accept it. So I understand this has been a very long video. Thank you for sticking around. I'm sorry. I know I've been, like, I got really emotional there. I'm sorry. Um, if you think I was in the wrong, comment. If you think they were in the wrong, comment. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, stories of your own experiences, with bad agencies or management or anything, please feel free to let me know because we need to get this out there and we need to let people know that just because you are an agency doesn't mean you get to treat people like shit. I understand that's gonna happen. I mean, that's part of LA, unfortunately. That's just what happens. You know, I, I, I don't expect to be treated like a princess or a queen, but I damn sure expect to be treated like a lady and with respect. You don't have to bow down to me or put me on a pedestal, but you need to have at least some common decency with me and not scream at me. So, that's my little rant. Quite a big rant, actually. So, that's that. That's my story. I hope you guys um, take it with a grain of salt. Like I said, they may be a perfect agency for you, but after my experience with them, I will be warning everybody away from them. So, Bergen Agency, you're talking to somebody who has 20,000 Instagram followers and 5,000 Twitter followers. 25,000 people, a lot of which are other actors and models that live in Los Angeles and the surrounding area, are going to know about this. I hope to gain more YouTube followers. I don't have very many, but like, follow, subscribe. I'm going to be talking about more experiences in LA as well as how you can start your acting career. And God bless everybody. Have a good night.